In this video, we're going to be looking at two different Facebook video ads, both of which I think are doing really well. We're going to be breaking them down, looking at what I think they do fantastically, what I think they could do even better, and how you can apply these things to your own video ads to get even better results. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Andrew Hubbard. I'm the founder of Hubbard Digital, and this is actually a new series that we're doing. So if you enjoy it, make sure you tap the like button. It tells me that you like these videos, you wanna see more of them, and it helps with the YouTube algorithm as well. And if you want to hear more from me, make sure you click subscribe and hit the little bell to get notified whenever I release a new video. Now let's jump over and get straight into these ads. Okay, so both of these video ads are from a company called Yoga Body Naturals. I actually saw these ads in Instagram. I clicked and I bought and I'll explain why uh, as we go through this. But let's take a look at the first ad and go through it. Does stretching prevent injuries? The answer is no. Okay, so right there, I love this from the start. They do something that I actually spoke about this uh, in my last presentation at Social Media Marketing World. And what they're doing is they open with a phrase or a statement that directly contradicts a common belief. So he's coming out and saying, does stretching prevent injuries? No. Because most athletes, most, most people who are into exercise, they think that stretching helps prevent injuries. So they stretch before they exercise because they want to avoid those injuries. So by him opening this video, and the very first thing he says is that stretching doesn't prevent injuries, it piqued my attention because I was like, well, that goes against everything that I've been taught and everything that I've believed since, you know, from when I first started exercising. So who is this guy and what's he talking about, right? And you actually notice that the very first screen on this ad, so the thumbnail for this ad that they had selected, had the text down the bottom as well. It said, does stretching prevent injury? No. So those two things, they catch you, they hook you at the very beginning within the first three seconds of the ad, and that's what you wanna do. So the lesson there, hook people using a, a contradictory statement or something that goes against a common belief and do it in the first few seconds. All right, let's keep going. I'm a yoga teacher, that might sound like heresy, but all of the research, all the sports science says, no, stretching doesn't prevent injuries. So what he's just done there, it's a very simple statement, but he's backing up his claim by mentioning that the sports science doesn't actually say that stretching prevents injuries. So he's making the big claim at the start in the first three seconds, and then that second little piece is just to back up his claim. He's giving it some credibility. This means when you go to watch a 10K or a marathon and you see all those runners bobbing up and down, doing calf stretches and doing quad stretches, none of those stretches will prevent injuries. It's a good way to warm up, it feels good, but it won't prevent injuries. So what's the point of stretching? Is there any point at all? This is what we call a bridge. So what he's just done there is he's related, again, he's trying to create a uh, point of reference there. He's trying to make it so the viewer can relate. So he's saying, you know, at those 10Ks, at those marathons, when you see people bobbing up and down stretching, that doesn't actually help. So he's just trying to relate to the viewer there, assuming that there's somebody who is into that kind of exercise. Then what he's doing, he's saying, what's the point of stretching? Is there any point at all? So this is a bridge, and now he's going to go into his big claim that stretching doesn't prevent injuries, and then he's going to explain what the benefits of stretching are, I guess. Let's see. There's absolutely a point, but you need to differentiate between stretching and targeted flexibility training. Stretching is exactly what you see people do at the gym. A little bit of this, a little bit of this, bouncing up and down, really great way to warm up. Targeted flexibility training is when you take someone like me with hips that were like this, and through targeted flexibility training, you open up and change their actual body. All right, this is where he introduces a, the new concept. This is the new way or the better way. And so he's saying, this is how you believed things to be, that you would do these traditional stretches, but that doesn't work. I've got a new way, and he's given it a name here, targeted flexibility training. And then he's explaining what that does. So the, what he's doing here, he's introducing his new way, and he's given it a name, targeted flexibility training. When you change someone's biomechanics, when you change somebody's posture, when you change the way they sit and walk and run, that has a dramatic impact on their potential for injury, their potential for power, speed, and output as well. Stretching doesn't prevent injuries, but targeted flexibility training can change your posture, which absolutely can prevent injuries. 
and that just reinforces it. He's saying stretching doesn't prevent injuries, but my method, which changes your posture and therefore will help prevent injuries. So he's saying my method does because it changes your posture and that therefore prevents injuries. Interesting. Now he's going into an intro, it looks like. My name is Lucas Rockwood. I'm a yoga teacher, I'm a trainer, but I used to be a stiff office guy. Ah, so he did two things there. He gave himself some more credibility. He introduced himself and he explained that he's a yoga teacher. So that's giving him credibility. He's demonstrating that he is an expert in this area that he's talking about, okay? The second thing he did there was he said, but I used to be a stiff office guy. Guess who most of the audience are that he's speaking to? Guess who I am, right? So. I sit at a desk all day. This relates to me and that's what he's doing. He's creating that, that relatability. I transform my body using something I'll call gravity yoga. It's a targeted flexibility practice. The supplement to whatever you're doing it takes 15 minutes per day. We work through hamstrings, hips. All right, so before we go on here, um, let's just look at this. So he said, I was a stiff office guy and uh, in my head, that, I think that's, that was me, that's me. And then he went on to say, but I transformed my body using this method. So he's saying, I've been where you are, but now I'm in this better place thanks to my method. So he's kind of showing the transformation there. Shoulders, wrists, twists and ankles. We work on your spine as well. And it's a very effective way to change your body. If you're struggling with flexibility, I'd encourage you to check it out. You'll find all the details down below. Really simple call to action there at the end as well, which is what you want. So we just closed out with, this is what we're going to do. It's a free thing. Click down below and get it. So that call to action is a crucial piece of the puzzle as well. So overall, that's a fantastic ad. I think he's opened really well. Uh, he went into the bridge. The only thing I would probably change about this ad is that second piece. He kind of kept going a little bit too long when he was, explaining that stretching doesn't work. Like we got the point after the first sort of 20 seconds maybe, but he kind of dragged that out a little bit. But if you're looking for this, this same framework to apply to your own ads, it's a really simple one. You open with a controversial statement, something that goes against what they believe. You give yourself a little bit of credibility, explain what, why it doesn't work, what the science says or give some details to back up what you're claiming. You go into what the alternative is and why the alternative is better. Again, give yourself a bit more credibility by explaining who you are and what you do and then go through and explain the transformation. This is where I was or this is where my client was or my student was and this is where they are now. Thanks to this method, I'm going to show you for free. Here's the call to action. You can apply that simple framework to your own ads but I really like that one. Um, that wasn't the one that got me to buy, so let's now look at their second ad that I think is, is fantastic as well. And this is the one that I clicked on and bought. So let's play that now. Let me ask you something. How are you doing with your flexibility? How are you doing with your range of motion? Let's do a quick flexibility test. All right, so I like the opening of this one as well. There's two things you can learn from this. One, look at how this guy's sitting. I cannot imagine being able to sit or squat in that position, right? So right from the start, it catches my eye because I'm like, this is this is unfathomable for me to be able to, to do that. And he says straight away, how are you doing with your flexibility? And I sit at a desk all day. I go to the gym most days, and then I sit back at my desk, right? That's a recipe for tight, muscles, tight, everything, right? So my flexibility is absolutely horrible. My wife thinks it's hilarious when she sees me try to put my socks on. I can barely get there to put my socks on, right? She thinks it's a massive joke. So when I see this and I see this guy that's like super flexible and he says, how are you doing with your flexibility? Instantly that grabbed my attention. I was like, oh, not great actually. <laughs> let's see what else you've got to say. Then he went into, let's do a quick flexibility test. Flexibility test, we'll do hamstrings, hips, Spine, let's start with hamstrings. Sit down, stretch your legs out in front of you, your feet as wide as your hips, and give yourself a score. Three, two, one. So three is not quite to your toes, two is fingertips touching your toes, and one is your wrists on top of your toes, right? Your score. Yeah, I scored a three for that one, in case you're wondering. 
down below. Next, let's do hips. So we'll do a butterfly pose. One, two, three fists between your heels and your groin. And then from here, I'd like you to measure how high your knees are up off the ground. This would be three, this would be two, and this would be one. If your knees go all the way down, that would also be one. So three, two, and then one. Write your score down. That was a three for me as well. Blow. One more pose. We'll do a back bend. Knees as wide as your hips. Drop your head back. If your hands reach your bum, that's three. If your fingertips reach your heels, that's two. And if your heels reach your palms, that's one. One more time. Three. Fingertips would be two. And palms of your hands would be one. Now there's something here that, I don't know if they did this intentionally or not. If they did it intentionally, then kudos to them, really smart. But what this causes you as the viewer to do, or it caused me to do anyway, I was pausing this ad and I was doing the things, right? I was literally pausing it and I was going to do these tests and I was like, yep, three, what's next? And I'd play it and I'd pause. What that's doing is that's actually providing positive engagement signals to Facebook or Instagram. In my case, I was watching it on Instagram. So every time I was pausing and pressing play again, that's telling Instagram he's really interested in this ad. Like each of those is a positive engagement signal. So whether they did that deliberately or not, whether that was by design with this ad, it's definitely something to think about. If you can get people to pay that much attention to your ad that they'll pause it, do whatever you say, then play again, pause, play, and interact and engage with the ad. That's fantastic for the Facebook algorithm. So we'll click play. So here's the deal. If you're scoring threes or twos on hamstrings, hips, and spinal mobility, there's a good chance you could really benefit from some targeted mobility training. My name's Lucas Rockwood. I teach a program. So again, he, for the targeting, I'm assuming these people are targeting. And if I was to target this, a really great way to do your targeting would be showing this to people who work in office jobs, who work in indoor type jobs. And you could even layer that on and people who go to the gym, right? Because like I said, that's, that's a recipe for, for tight muscles, for a lack of flexibility. Is if you go to the gym and work out a lot, but you work in an office job, chances are you're going to be in this position. But just generally, like a general broad targeting is any uh, professional job where you're sitting at a desk all day, you're going to fall into this category. And so doing that test, it's instantly got your interest peaked because you just failed the test. You want to know, I failed, how do I get better, right? That's, that's the point. And again, now he's just going into what I can see here. Looks like he's going into that same introduction again. My name's Lucas Rockwood. I teach a program called Gravity Yoga. It's a supplemental 15 minute per day practice. It's not meant to replace what you're doing. It's meant to work in conjunction with whatever form of- The 15 minute thing, they've obviously identified that a key concern or pain point or uh, objection that people have before buying is that they're worried this is going to take a lot of time. So he says 15 minutes so he can squash that objection. He's like, don't worry, it takes 15 minutes a day. With whatever form of fitness, exercise, or yoga you're doing now to open up your body. I'd love to show you more details. Click the link down below and I'll see you on the other side. Again, really simple call to action. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to help you fix this problem. Click the link down below and I'll see you there. Great call to action. Two other things I noticed about this one that I, I should mention, and it was in the other ad as well. So these are both really important. Both of these video ads were under two minutes long. That is absolutely by design and you should try to do that with yours as well. Because if they're under two minutes, they can run on both Facebook and Instagram. If they are more than two minutes long, you can't run them on Instagram. So it's really worth getting your videos below the two minute mark so you can run it across all of those platforms. The second thing I notice here is you'll notice these are um, slightly taller than they are wide. They're not square videos. They're actually a little bit taller. They're a four by five ratio or um, I think the, I'm not sure what the actual dimensions are. I think it's 1080 by 1350, something like that. Um, but that taller ratio looks better on the Instagram feed, takes up more screen real estate and does the same on Facebook as well. So um, instead of going square, now you're better off going with this four by five ratio for your videos as well. But a few things we can learn from this video. One, it's that opening again, it's speaking directly to the viewer. 
Okay, that spoke directly to me. So if you can get something and open with something like that and add a visual cue, that's the big thing to take away from this. Not only did they open at the start with that question, you know, how's your flexibility going? But the way he was sitting was deliberate. It added a visual cue, so I didn't even need to listen to the video to have my interest peaked because of the way the guy was sitting, okay? So doing that, adding in those similar things, but then having that little test and showing people how to score themselves, fantastic. That's a really great way to get engagement on your videos and to get interest, okay? They're the things to take away from this second video, I think. Yoga Body Natural is doing a fantastic job with their videos, kudos to them. Um, check out their uh, ad library on Facebook if you wanna see more, they've got a bunch. They're just doing a really good job. They're running these across both platforms. Um, there isn't too much I would improve with this second one. Uh, it really is a good ad and there are lots that you can learn from it. So I hope you take that away and apply it to your own ads. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you, you tap that like button. Like I said, it's a new series. Tapping that like button tells me that we should do more of these. Plus it helps the YouTube algorithm and helps the channel grow and I really appreciate it. If you wanna hear more from me, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notified whenever I release a new video. All right, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.